Hey guys, and welcome to Pretty Eyes. My name is Lavana. This show is based off of domestic violence surviving life after. If this is your first time watching this show, please subscribe and hit that bell so you guys can get future notifications for things that are coming forth. Um, first of all, I would like to say I want to give honor to God, give him the glory and the honor because if it was not for him, I would not be sitting here doing this show. I also want to thank my family and friends for much support. Um, if this is something that is not for you or something that you don't want to watch, please turn it over to someone that it can be very beneficial for them. Um, I want to start off by saying I hope you guys and I pray that you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I came on last week just for about 10 minutes just to tell you guys how much I love you. Um, hope this encourages someone and hope you guys get the support that we're trying to push out to you. Today I'm going to start um, just talking just a little bit about the repercussions and different things that can affect by domestic violence. And again, um, if you've never watched this show before, this show is based off of domestic violence surviving. So this show is going to empower and encourage someone to leave the abuser if they've already left the abuser. That's awesome. If you have not, this should be able to give you tips or give you like ideas and different information that can help you move forward to get out of a situation that is like that. Um, so one of the things that I would like to talk about first um, tonight is I would like to say that a lot of people that struggle with domestic violence or going through different type of physical or emotional uh, abuse, it can really affect the children, especially if there's children in the household. Um, and if there's kids that are witnessing different things like that, that can really ruin them to the point of having ongoing anxiety, you know, later in life where they may get a counselor and may be able to speak to a psychiatrist or something like that. But sometimes they just really need their mother or the father, whoever is going through that, to really talk to them and give them clear, you know, clearance of what's happening. A lot of kids are confused about why it's happening. And most of the time the kids are blaming their self because they're, they're confused of why it's happening in the first place. Um, a second thing is the kids will go on and have like moments of depression um, that could come with bedwetting, that could come with um, thoughts of suicide for themselves, um, you know, a lot of anger or acting out at school. Um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, grown children. It could be elementary students. It could be middle-aged kids, you know, whatever the age of the child is. Anybody that's under 18 um, pretty much, you know, can be considered a, a young adult or a young kid. Um, another thing is they can also be going through emotional distress, you know, where they're, they're having an issue with knowing if they're accepted or uh, having feelings of rejection um, and not knowing if it's their fault. Um, they want the things to stop that's happening with their mother or their father or their aunt or grandmother or whoever the person is that's their guardian or whoever is raising, you know, that, that individual. A lot of times um, children can turn over to like eating disorders um, or sometimes, like I mentioned just before, bedwetting or, you know, nightmares or sleepwalking, sleep apnea, you know, different things like that. And the result of it is they're not, they're not eating correctly. They're not being nourished correctly. And then it starts to show on the outside, you know, what, how they feel about themselves. They feel sad, you know, they feel bad about their self. So I just want to say if anybody is going through something like that and they have an abuser that is in their home, whether that be biological father or mother or just a stepmother or father, you know, remove the kids from the situation is something that is very important. And if you can't move out of it for yourself, at least remove the children so the children don't have to be involved involved with seeing different uh, acts of violence because um, it's very serious and a lot of people think that oh you know they're just kids or oh, they're not really paying attention but kids do remember a lot kids remember a lot of things that go on from childhood all the way up to adulthood and that can really disturb them and it can really mess up their life and you know years later you may have left your abuser but you are still having to deal with um, the way your child has became because of something that they've witnessed, you know, in the past or in the present or, you know, things that are just, you know, coming near. Another thing is um, when I was talking about eating disorders, the eating disorders could be where they overeat, you know, overeating. 
that's a disorder or they're eating lots of food and they just can't stomach the food because they are upset, you know, in their stomach. Um, and so many people are always worried about their self, you know, as far as the relationship or the man or the woman, but a lot of people forget about the children. And the children play a very important role in a family, you know, in a family life. So um, I just want to speak out that if you do have kids and they're witnessing things, first of all, it's going to make them lose respect for you as an individual. Um, the second thing is it can really wear on them. And you don't want them to become that type of adult that either they choose that kind of person for their own relationship or... Uh, they're just uh, mistrusting people because of things that they saw, you know, growing up. If you have kids and your kids are around, you know, try not to do that in front of them. Try not to do it at all. If you out of the relationship, that's awesome. You know, I always encourage people to, you know, read your word. Um, you know, try to do things that is going to better yourself. Surround yourself around positive positivity. That way you will um, basically take the blinders off of your own eyes so you can really witness and see what's happening, you know, right in front of you. Because sometimes you're so involved in it that you can't even see when it's happening right under your nose. So I just want to say that I hope you guys really, you know, hear this. If, like I said, if it's not for you, pass it on to someone that it can really help. You know, it can be beneficial to them. Um, also... Lastly, there's another thing that's talking about um, sleep or sleep disorders, and that could be insomnia. That could be where uh, the kid just can't go to sleep. They having sleep problems, and then a lot of people want to start throwing these kids on medication. You know, medication is not the answer. What they really need is love, and they need your time. And all the time that is wasted and invested in the abuser is the time that the kids can be getting, you know. So I just wanted to say that because I know that we're around the holiday season. Uh, even though we just passed Thanksgiving, we're coming up on Christmas. And a lot of times people just feel like getting the kids a gift is something that is going to make them satisfied, kind of keep them out of their hair. And I understand that we're going through this pandemic at this time. So a lot of kids are at home, you know, even the college kids, you know, where they have to study at home. They can't go to school because of COVID. Um, but just be mindful when there is arguments in the house and they're pushing away from you and they're going off with their friends or wherever they're going, you know, those things bother them. And a lot of times kids won't tell us, you know, straight up that, you know, I don't like this happening or mom or dad, why won't you leave this individual that's not treating you right? They act out, you know, and the main thing is you don't want your kid to be acting out. You don't even want to be sad. So what makes you think that your kids want to be sad, you know, and going through those kind of things? Because um, they don't have to be, you know, they didn't ask to be put here. They're a gift from God. And I feel like we should really treat them as such. Um, another thing, back to the eating disorders, what I was talking about. Sometimes kids can overeat, but then sometimes they can't eat at all. And then you go into uh, binging, where some kids are eating so much, then they go to the point of they just throwing up the food, you know, uh, or acting like they're um, starving or maybe feeling like they're really hungry. And then when they start eating, they can't stomach it because they have so many things that are on their brain. And today, in today's society, I really feel bad for the youth because they don't have a lot of people to talk to. Um, you know, people that are my age or older, they always had family. You know, they have grandmothers, they have mothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, a lot of different people that they can talk to or they can relate to them. In today's society, these kids don't really have um, what we had, you know, growing up. They have a lot of you know, internet stuff that's entertaining them, a lot of video gaming, you know, a lot of TV stuff that's kind of growing them up or teaching them the way when we should be the one that's teaching them, you know, the right from wrong. And as I stated before in a couple of segments previously, if we are setting a bad example for the kids, how do you think that's going to be for them when they become our age? Because they actually are our future. And I don't think a lot of people take the time to think about the legacy, you know, that we leave behind, you know, with our kids. Um, so it doesn't matter how many kids you have. It doesn't matter uh, how old they are. At the end of the day, they love us. You know, they love their mom, their dad, or whoever the person is that raised them. And if they're being treated in a, in a wrongful manner, that's going to really affect the kids. So I just want to say I love you guys. I really hope that this encourages someone. I really hope that 
you can pass this over to a coworker, a family member. You know, I always say that. And tonight we were actually supposed to have a special guest, but you know, some complication took place, but that's okay. Cause we're going to go forward uh, in the next week. We will have someone coming in on the show on pretty eyes. And remember, I told you this show is about showing pretty eyes to encourage yourself, lift yourself up. You know, don't be sad. Don't, don't be down in the dumps. You know, you've been full of sorrow long enough. It's time to move forth, live life, be excited and show those pretty eyes. Um, and lastly, I told you guys last week that I was going to leave a 1-800 number for domestic violence. Well, this time I'm going to leave one for the suicide, and it is called the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Not a hotline, but a lifeline, because we do care about people's lives. Um, if you're still here on earth and you're still breathing, that means you got work to do. So with that being said, I'm going to give out this number. Um, if this is something that it's not good for you. I always tell you, pass it on to someone that it can be beneficial to for them. This number is going to be 1-800-273-8255. Again, the number is 1-800-273-8255. And this is called National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So... If you got anybody that, you know, been kind of talking about suicide or you feeling like they're having suicidal thoughts or they're doing things to hurt themselves or others, you pass that number over to them. It's somebody that they can talk to. Um, and a lot of people like to talk to people that are biased of the situation so they can feel more comfortable to talk about their business or how they feel. So I just want to say I love you guys so much. I thank you so much for the support. Hit that bell, please subscribe, and don't forget to show those pretty eyes. Um, next week, we will have someone on the show. It will be a very special guest, and we're going to be talking about what was her determining point to leave the abuser, what she's doing today, and how long she stayed in that abuse. Um, she's going to tell briefly her story. So I hope you guys tune in. And remember, I told you this show is every Thursday. I'm sorry I'm a little late tonight doing the show, but I know you guys can probably check this out in your spare time. Um, also, pass it over to anyone that you think that this can help. I want to encourage you. I love you. Subscribe. Hit that bell uh, next week. And I just want to say you guys have a great evening. Have a blessed week. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Show those pretty eyes.